The Bay of Genoa, May 2010. An Italian diver discovers an astonishing U-boat wreck. The submarine is virtually intact, resting nearly 400 feet underwater. Its presence raises a variety of questions. What is this boat? Why did it sink in these waters? A team of divers and historians have joined forces to uncover the story of this forgotten submarine. Seventy years ago, packs of German submarines traveled the seas, relentlessly attacking Allied supply ships. These submarines, nicknamed the Grey Wolves, were true predators. Accounts of their feats made for great propaganda, and their crews were viewed as exceptional soldiers. U-boats were reputed invincible. However, the research on the Genovese wreck reveals quite a different reality. What is the story behind this forgotten submarine lying off the coast of Genoa and La Spezia? Roberto Rinaldi is a former Cousteau crew diver who has turned to filmmaking and knows the ocean depths well. For Roberto, the discovery of this wreck brings the promise of a wonderful new adventure. In the world of deep sea diving, you hear lots of legends involving submarines. And one day, my friend Lorenzo del Veneziani called me to tell me that a submarine had been found in the waters of Portofino. He invited me to dive with him. And I was truly surprised. The last thing I expected to find there was a submarine stuck underwater in the mud with its bow pointing upwards. I'd never seen anything like that before. Roberto has formed a team to investigate the identity of this boat. Aldo, Marco, and Gabrielle are all highly experienced divers who have participated in many underwater expeditions. The wreck is not easily accessible. It is resting at 400 feet below the surface of the water. Man rarely swims in such depths because the short expeditions are extremely dangerous. Unearthing the identity of the ship, this is not going to be an easy task for these three men. Marine concretion is everywhere on the wreckage, covering up any possible clues. There are no numbers painted on the hull or on the conning tower, no distinguishing marks. Inside access is impossible. The entrance to the ship is blocked by overlapping pieces of metal. The Genoa Bay wreck isn't giving up its identity easily. In order to move forward, Roberto and Aldo have decided to bring some skills to the team. Submarine buffs Luke and Mark Breuer are the curators of Le Grand Blockhouse a museum dedicated to the Atlantic Wall and its history. They founded this museum inside the greatest German fortification along the Atlantic. 
I think at the end of the war, everyone had the same idea, to move on, to turn the page. If it had been possible at the time to destroy the U-boats, the underwater headquarters and the bunkers, it would have been done, if only so people could forget this terrible and deadly page in our history. It's taken years for us to begin wondering about these things, why they're still around and what purpose they served. In the rooms of this unusual museum, many objects tell the story of the German submarines. Marc and Luc Breuer didn't hesitate for a second when they were contacted by Roberto Rinaldi. They had been waiting for this sort of mystery wreck for years. What I find fascinating in this project is the reconstructing of the submarine's movements, from its launch to its demise, and also the prospect of adding to our historical knowledge in this largely forgotten area. It's exciting to feel like you're participating in history and not just being a spectator. Hi, welcome. Did you have a good trip? Hi, yes, fine, thank you. Mark and Luke wanted to see the pictures of the wreck as soon as they stepped foot in Italy. In the hills of Genoa, they are discovering these images for the first time. You can clearly make out the deck's pointed shape. It would be interesting to be able to see this discovery all the way through to the end, to identify the boat, to find its number, and retrace its entire history we would find out how it ended up here in front of La Spezia. What should we be looking for specifically, to be sure? Try to cut through the nets and look for identification on the rear and on the gun. Understood. The historians have asked Roberto and Aldo to focus on the gun located at the rear of the boat. Identifying this gun would enable the research to move forward considerably. But a diving expedition 400 feet below the sea involves enormous constraints. Roberto's just dived in, three minutes for the descent, 15 minutes at the wreck, and at least three and a half hours to come back up very slowly. According to the earlier pictures, there's a huge mass of tangled netting. Who knows if they'll have enough time to cut through all of it. Roberto and Aldo immediately realize that they will not be able to clear the gun. Underwater currents have wrapped the netting tightly around it. They will not be able to uncover the precious number that would help Luke and Mark to identify the boat. We tried to cut the net, didn't we, Aldo? It's everywhere. There are old and newer nets, cables. And there's not enough time. Not enough time. After two minutes, you can't see in front of you. You can't see what you're cutting. The weather's good, isn't it? Yes, it is. How about a slice of pizza? Brothers, I love you. You're the best. <laughs> Roberto and Aldo's unsuccessful dive marks a turning point in the investigation. Mark and Luke have decided to consult German military archives. This time, luck is on their side. 
In Freiburg, they have found a map with the location of U-boat sinkings, as well as an important clue. Of the 62 submarines that navigated the Mediterranean Sea, only three are unaccounted for. And the last known position for one of them, the U-455, was close to Genoa. This information is essential to Luke and Mark because there is a place in Germany where you can find lots of information on the U-boats. The archives at Cuxhaven contain logbooks, objects, and photos. It is a real gold mine for researchers hunting down information. Uh, we are researching the U-boat U-455. Horst Bredow, a former submariner himself, is the guardian of the temple. His knowledge of U-boat history is unparalleled. Everything on the U-455 is here. There is a lot of information. It's unbelievable. There are so many pictures of our submarine. That's the Saint-Nazaire. Incredible. We've acquired exceptional material. And now we have a real foundation to work from, with lots of visual elements. We have pictures of the men and the different missions, of the training sessions, of the crew's arrival and departure from Saint-Nazaire. We have lots of references. This is very important. In Cuxhaven, Luke and Mark have met someone essential to the investigation. Axel Niesel is a German historian who is a regular at the Archive Library. As a renowned technical expert, he has shed light on the events leading up to several U-boat sinkings and has been involved in the search for many old submarines. The U-455 was most definitely a 7C type submarine, but each shipbuilder works slightly differently. This is helpful today when identifying the boats on the basis of photos. For instance, a distinguishing feature on the U-455 is this railing along the tower. This type of railing comes from the Kiel shipyards. And this particular magnetic compass, boats built in later years used a different model. In these pictures, you can see the tower in detail. The photos found in the Cuxhaven archives and those taken by Roberto are compared. The three specialists are now confident that the submarine in Genoa is the U-455. Finding the boat's identity is the key to moving forward. With the submarine's number, the logbook of its early missions can be located. This document contains lots of information on the submarine's travels, but it doesn't answer the primary question that continues to fascinate Luke, Mark, and Axel. What happened to the U-455? The lists of the crew should help move the investigation forward. These lists contain the names of the various sailors who were assigned to this boat. Here are some leads. Here's an LI, an onboard engineer named Servotke. Here's a Schwartz Gerhardt. Schwartz is a pretty common name in Germany, so that one may be difficult. There's an officer Orobon. After 70 years, if we could find three or four of these crew members, it would be a miracle. It would be a miracle if we find one. 